Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, a free site, BettingAngle.us, a free site. Let's talk boxing. Let's talk the super middleweight division. But first, remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Today is July the 6th, 2020. Now, I know here on YouTube that the subscribers to my YouTube channel are hardcore boxing fans. People go back years on this site, right? Sometimes I'll make a statement and somebody else will just write in the comment section, I saw Marciano and I disagree, right? I know people here have thought through their responses and I know they aren't prisoners of the moment. I know they're not just going to go with a popular opinion because that's the way it seems to be for the last five minutes. Let me just say, and no one here on this site ever has to agree with me. It's really more of a uh, group type round table. That's why I keep emphasizing the comment section. But I put up a poll a day ago asking for people to list the best current super middleweight. The people I included in the poll, and I know someone commented that I should have included Danny Jacobs. I didn't, because I don't believe Danny deserves to be on the list. The five guys I included were David Benavides, Callum Smith, Billy Joe Saunders, Caleb Plant, and Saul Alvarez. Now, I'll just say this. I have the utmost respect for the people who follow my site. I've learned a lot from you. Uh, comments have me looking at fights referenced in the comments. But I'm shocked at this vote total. Let me just say, here are the vote totals after 550 votes. And the poll's going to stay open, right? I'm just going to leave it up on YouTube. David Benavides has gotten 12% of the vote. Callum Smith has gotten 8% of the vote. Billy Joe Saunders has gotten 13% of the vote. The same total that Caleb Plant has gotten. Saul Alvarez, and I'm shocked by this. I want to be clear here. I'm bona fidely shocked by this. This is not what I would have expected. Saul Alvarez has 55% of the vote. In other words, Saul Alvarez has more votes than Benavides, Smith, Saunders, and Plant combined. And this is after exactly one fight at super middleweight. And that one fight was against Rocky Fielding a guy who Caleb Smith did not allow to get out of the first round, right? Let me just say this. Um, I view this as a betting opportunity, right? Betting at times is about being a contrarian. While I think Canelo is certainly a Hall of Famer, while Canelo is a guy who has won titles in several weight classes, including 175, right? The weight class above 168. While Canelo has done a lot and has a list of very tough opponents he's fought, right? I just don't see, given this list, short of a KO, how he beats Billy Joe Saunders or Caleb Plant, right? Let's be clear here. I know Canelo has an excellent jab, no question about it. And I know Canelo has excellent upper body movement. I'm also aware that Ryder beat Callum, uh, Callum Smith, in my opinion at least, in their recent fight, and that there is a chance that a Canelo could get inside on Callum Smith just like Ryder did and could treat Callum Smith like he treated Liam Smith earlier, right? Get underneath him, 
throw wicked body shots. Canelo is an excellent body puncher. That left hook to the body is a great punch. Right? I'll agree David Benavidez, who likes to fight in the pocket, would have a problem with Canelo's ability to move around the pocket and shoot that jab. But let me just say, I think a guy who can get Canelo, who wears a knee brace in transition, in other words, who can get Canelo fighting as they move together, and a guy who moves better than Canelo, who can actually force Canelo to trade with them and to work, right? Canelo's a guy who, in my opinion, has taken rounds off, including the Kovalev fight, right? I believe movers with fluidity who can keep Canelo from getting outside but force Canelo to move his feet who aren't going to make the mistake that Danny Jacobs made of coming over to Canelo and allowing him to put on an upper body show. Right? I believe a Saunders and a plant would have Canelo looking small and looking slow from a foot speed perspective as they move around the ring. I want people to revisit the Rocky Fielding fight. Canelo is hunting Rocky Fielding, right? Then they trade, Canelo ends up with Rocky Fielding up against the ropes. Rocky Fielding, a bigger man, and that's the problem Benavides and Smith would have, right? A bigger man against Canelo had a problem getting low enough to deal with Canelo when Canelo bent and went to his body. Canelo has one of boxing's biggest punches pound for pound. So when Canelo gets low and starts going to a taller man's body, that taller man has a problem getting low enough to match Canelo. And of course, Canelo takes out Rocky Fielding's ribcage. Rocky not adept in terms of hitting on the move, not a mover, right? A pocket was going to form in that fight. Fielding didn't have enough power to keep Canelo on the outside. Canelo walks through him. Let's talk about the Kovalev fight. Kovalev is moving, but it's unusual for Kovalev, who's older, right? Kovalev is older than Saunders and Plant. Right? Kovalev is not accustomed to moving. Now, in my opinion, that fight is closer than the scorecards. I thought Kovalev won a lot of rounds. But two fighters were getting tired in that fight. Canelo and Kovalev. Also, Kovalev wasn't the kind of guy who could throw power shots while on the move. Now contrast that with Caleb Plant, who has a here trigger left hook that he could literally throw from a position where he's backing up. It's, it's like an Akeem Olajuwon drop foot. He can just drop the left foot and then come with that left hand. Might be his dominant hand. I don't think Kovalev on the move has that in his arsenal. I think Canelo, if you get him to move with you, and if you're not always moving back, like Golovkin was in that second fight, I think Canelo would have a problem with Plant and Saunders. Right? I'm one of those people who's disappointed to hear that Saunders is not going to be Canelo's next opponent. Right? That's disappointing to me. If I were Saunders, and I understand Saunders was supposed to get a lot of money, and I understand the zone, according to reports, is supposed to be having some financial challenges. But if I were Saunders and they said to me at the last minute, hey, we need for you to take considerably less than agreed upon, I would agree to it. 
simply because a victory over Canelo would be a springboard to Saunders' career. Right? Canelo's the guy who sold out Madison Square Garden. That wasn't Rocky Fielding selling out Madison Square Garden. That was Canelo. Right? We know Canelo. Also, Canelo has left some unfinished business on the board. Right? Many fans want him to fight Golovkin a third time. Many fans, let me raise my hand, don't believe he beat Golovkin in either of the first two fights. Some people want to see Canelo against Danny Jacobs again. A person who beats Canelo might say, okay, you know what, let me go up to 175 and fight Kovalev. That fight suddenly has intrigue because fans have already learned that Canelo can beat Kovalev. Right? So to me, the Billy Joe Saunders... Canelo fight, I was fully planning on voting on Saunders in that fight. I know Canelo got 55% of the vote. Saunders got 13% of the vote here online, right? Okay, fair enough. My own poll. And obviously, <laughs> obviously my viewers don't agree with me, and I accept that. Don't get me wrong. I, I, you know, if Saunders comes to his senses and works out a deal with Canelo, I'll be at the casino betting on Saunders. Of all of these names, I think the, post, the person most likely to beat Canelo would be Caleb Plant. Every division is its own country. Right? I don't believe because Canelo was a middleweight champion. I don't believe because Canelo was a light heavyweight champion. But that means Canelo is going to be a dominant super middleweight champion. Right? This division is interesting. Understand, Chad Dawson fought super middleweight champion. Andre Ward found out that the super middleweight division was tougher than Dawson's light heavyweight division. Right? Joe Calzaghe gained weight, fought Bernard Hopkins. Right, a guy who had a belt at light heavyweight. I'm not sure if he had the belt for the Calzaghe fight, but Hopkins was a champion. He beat Tarver at 175. Right, Calzaghe coming up in weight won that fight. Right, weights matter. Divisions matter. As experienced as Canelo is, he doesn't have experience in this division. And while I believe Canelo is tough... If he gets inside, or if he gets to use his upper body outside, right? I think against a mover, he would have problems. Let me say this too. Let's look at that second Golovkin fight. You know, Golovkin landed a lot of jabs. Folks, hand speed wise, Golovkin is not Caleb Plant. Right, understand when Canelo, who's collapsing the pocket, he's coming forward that whole fight. And let's face it too, Golovkin isn't much of a mover. Right, when Canelo collapses the pocket and swings some big shots, Golovkin actually has the opportunity to counter with jabs. A stylist, a guy who's a little bit slicker on the move, a Saunders or a plant would be able to improve on what Golovkin did. And I'm one of those people who still believes today that Golovkin won that second Canelo fight. So let me tip my hat to Canelo. You know, I talk about people who are box office gold. It's clear that Canelo has admirers, has a solid fan base, is a box office king for a reason, is able to sell out arenas for a reason, right? He's clearly a Hall of Fame fighter. He's clearly one of the fighters who defines this era. But he's new to 168. I think there are guys at 168 who have done a lot. Understand, Saunders, Plant, unbeaten. By the way, Benavides and Callum Smith, unbeaten. 
I'd probably take Canelo against both of those guys. But Saunders and Plant are unbeaten, and they have the style that, to me, would give Canelo problems. Combined, in the poll, Saunders and Callum Smith got 26% of the vote combined. Saul Alvarez, 55%. 55%. Let's just say that if Saul Alvarez, who, it's my understanding, is thinking about fighting Derevianchenko at 168 for his next fight, if he sticks around 168, we're going to find out a lot. Because all of these guys are unbeaten, right? Benavides, Smith, Saunders, and Plant. There's a lot of money to be made. <laughs> a lot of money to be made. Right? My point to you, though, is in this division, the division of Ward, the division of Calzaghi, right? Understand, in this division, Canelo is going to be tested a hell of a lot more than these poll numbers that have him winning 55% of the vote, more than the other four guys combined, suggests. Right? I think 168 is a difficult place. I think Saul Alvarez would find his Waterloo against Billy Joe Saunders or Caleb Plant. Right? I say Waterloo because Napoleon, like Alvarez, was a little undersized, wasn't he? Was viewed as a world beater, wasn't he? Then he ran into some turbulence. I think Saunders and Plant could make Canelo look bad in the middle of the ring. I think that's a fight where Canelo would look small, would be trying to pin guys who can move laterally both ways, right? Who, if he tried to set up a pocket where he could dazzle people with his upper body, would find that these guys would be able to stay outside. Dance move, not look like Danny Jacobs looked at 160. Let me say this too about Danny Jacobs. Great middleweight. Great middleweight. His performance against Canelo wasn't his best. He looked weight drained. Here again, if we were talking about the middleweight division, Danny belongs on the list. This isn't the middleweight division. This is a different neighborhood. This is a different country. This is 168. Right? I hope Canelo decides to fight Saunders or Plant. I'm sure I'll run into some of the voters here at the casino. While they'll be taking the guy who won this poll going away, I'll be the huckster on the other side of the play. I think Saunders and Plant would give Canelo a hard time. Uh, somebody's got to tap Billy Joe Saunders on the shoulder and tell him, hey, you need this fight. Right? If it takes a pay cut, take the pay cut. In boxing, you're always paid in your next fight based on what you did in your last fight. You beat Canelo, who? You'll be in a different place place entirely. Saunders right now is unbeaten. I'm sure many of you don't believe he's a Hall of Famer. Beat Canelo and that overnight would be the biggest name on Saunders' resume. A resume that includes wins over Andy Lee, Chris Eubank, right? who, according to rumor, might be lined up to fight Jamal Charlo and David Lemieux. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. Again, I'm going to leave this poll up. I'm shocked. I wasn't expecting Canelo to win the poll. I was expecting guys like Khaled Plan to do a hell of a lot better than 13%. <laughs> That's a little bit shocking. Callum Smith, unbeaten, beat George Groves, for crying out loud, who might style-wise have been a tougher matchup for him than Canelo. Right? Getting 8%? This is a tough crowd. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments 
in the comment section of this video or in the comment section of the poll that's under the community heading here uh, on YouTube. Thanks for stopping by.